Hello, everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, June the 6th at about 2 p.m. Eastern. Wow, U.S. stock indexes jumped big time today with the NASDAQ composite right at a record high, its past record high, on hopes of a faster economic rebound from a coronavirus-led slump after data showed surprise a job <laughs> surprise job additions, I should have said, in May. Data from the Labor Department showed non-farm payrolls rose by 2.5 million jobs last month after a record plunge of 20.6 million in April, and the unemployment rate rose uh, unexpectedly fell to 13.3% in May from 14.7% in April. So we had a really, really nice surprise with the jobs report this morning, and that sent the market flying. So let's look at that market, and let's look at three stocks uh, or ETFs that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as you can see, and as we always do, we're looking at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. Of course, this is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 index. Now, when I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $320.20, or about $3,200, $3,202, on the S&P 500 itself. So really, really nice, big gap up this morning. Now, since the all-time closing high that we're used to looking back uh, at back here, the all-time closing high on February 19th of $338.34, the SPY is now only just about 5% off its all-time high up here. So finally, we're well out of correction territory and now possibly, potentially headed back toward those old highs. So it's 5% off the highs, and from its lows here, the SPY has actually risen 47% off its March lows back here when it fell down to 218, or about 2180 on the S&P 500 itself. So the uptrend has continued. It continued beautifully today. We've got to see if the SPY can continue it. Now we know that uh, moves up that are nearly parabolic, such as this one and such as this one, and parabolic moves like this don't usually last very long. They're sure fun while it's happening, though. So um, not to say it's going to pull back all the way, but got to say that there are some traders out there taking profits at some point. You may be one of them. Uh, so nice, sweet uptrend, very sweet. Now in coming weeks, or in the one especially this coming week, we have to see if the SPY can continue this uptrend. So if you do have profits, and I certainly hope you do, please keep track of your positions. Don't, don't, don't fall back on your heels and say, oh, it'll be okay. Keep track of your positions. Make sure you don't give those profits back. Um, as for now, because we're look, I'm looking at the RSI down here, it's just risen over the overbought line at 70. It's just uh, moved up above that. So because the SPY is overbought, we can see it doesn't mean that the SPY is going down immediately. It can stay this way for a while, but if you look back here on the chart in January and so forth, um, it, it doesn't last forever. So just be careful, be wise, enjoy your profits and, and strive not to give them all back. Okay, so let's go on to our next chart. Our next chart today is a chart of the Invesco QQQ, symbol QQQ. Now, as you all know, this is uh, filled with the top momentum, the top growth stocks in the NASDAQ stock market. When I captured this chart today, and you can't see it here, it didn't come up on the chart, uh, the QQQ was trading at $239.70. Now we're looking back and even down right now at its past all-time high at $236.98. That's a closing high. So, so far anyway, today, the QQQ has popped above that all-time high 
Woohoo! <laughs> and let's hope it closes above that prior high. That would be very cool. We'll have a new all-time closing high here. Now, there's nothing we can argue with here. Um, we've got a sturdy uptrend, at least for now, on average uh, volume. And if you all remember, in the last couple of weeks, we were talking about this rising wedge. Rising wedges can be a little, there are tons of fun while they're happening, but like all good things, uh, the wedge will come to an end, this upward, this upward move. But today, uh, the QQQ actually is or trying to pop above the upper channel line of that wedge, which is positive, which is bullish. So let's hope that it can stay doing that and can stay moving higher um, because there's nothing more fun than a nice bull market. Still and all, please keep a reality check in. Um, if the if profit taking does come in and at some point that usually happens, at least in the short term, the Qs do have support down here at about $233.50. So again, enjoy it. Keep track of your stops. And um, I, it, it, the QQQ is also just trying to get into overbought territory here at the 70 line. So be careful, enjoy it, and use your stops. Okay, for our final chart, you're saying to me, Tony, how can you get so conservative at a time like this? Uh, I'm just trying to look at some overall direction here. Today we're looking at a sector spiders at the sector spiders utilities ETF, the XLU. Now it has 28 holdings. The top holdings in the XLU are Nextera Energy, Dominion, Duke, Southern Company, Exelon, some of those guys. Now today when I captured this chart, the XLU was trading at $61.75. Now, the reason I chose the XLU is because literally every uh, sector ETF that I looked at today has gapped up dramatically. And I don't typically buy big gaps up because a lot of times if they go straight up, and I'm sure you've looked at some too, that's not, <laughs> I wanna buy low, sell high, not the other way around. I don't wanna buy high and sell low. So when, 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 a sector ETF or any other asset for that matter gaps way up. That's not, especially above all its moving averages. A lot of them are way up in the in the um, ether up here. That's not where I buy. That's more like where I'm tracking to keep my my stops going underneath the sell. So uh, I went conservative because if the um, if if the growth stocks here. Um, start turning around in the next week with profit taking or just weaken a little bit, then uh, investors typically move from that area down to more um, more conservative ETFs or sectors. And so with that in mind, I'm watching the XLU. So this is uh, why I'm looking at that. Again, I don't buy overbought sectors or, or sector ETFs or anything else. So uh, if growth stocks start to wobble next week uh, and uh, the XLU can go up here and move above this black line, this is the 200-day 200 simple, 200 simple moving average. So again, price right now is at $61.79. If price can move up and over this 200-day uh, moving average, which is right now coming in at $62.21, um, and the growth stocks, looking at the QQQ, you can look at it that way. If they start, if they start coming down, this is where a lot of people are going to go here in consumer staples. So if the XLU can move up above 62.21, so that I'm entering here right around 62.25, 62.30, uh, I may add a small share size of the XLU to my portfolio. Uh, my initial stop is going to be down here at $60.80, so that will be well below the 200-day moving average. Now, if in the coming weeks the XLU, and, and, and utilities move up on, on strong markets as well, they just tend to 
uh, overachieve when growth stocks are looking a little shaky. So we'll see what happens here. You may want to wait to get in this or not get in it at all, but I'm certainly going to keep it on my screen. So if and when the XLU can climb above 68.80 back up here, this prior resistance, I may add to my position. And by then, of course, my stop will be a trailing stop. And you can always... Uh, you can use the 20-day moving average, the red line on this screen, or pick your own trailing stop, but that's how I like to do it. Now, again, resistance up here is at 71. That is the all-time high. Uh, so uh, that, will, that I will be watching, and if and when the XLU gets up to that, we'll see whether we add to the position or even take some profits if that happens. And of course, as always, please know that if the market rolls to the downside on unexpected news, I may exit the trade early and before it exits, uh, reaches my stops. So I, I always keep that in mind. So with that in mind, you may want to keep an eye on the XLU during the coming week. And now before we go on to final thoughts, Please know that at TonyTurner.com, we are offering a 20% discount on my popular online trading, noticed right down here, Trend the Trade to Profits. So if you want to discover an easy and powerful strategy to grow your portfolio, knowing how to trade the trend, please check this offer out at the link on this screen or simply click on the orange button below. Okay, so now... Uh, one thing I wanted to put in here, famed self-help teacher Anthony Robbins said, he said this, and I've always liked it. He said, the quality of your questions determines the quality of your life. The quality of your questions determines the quality of your life. And know that if you hear some um, someone talking to themselves, that could be me, because I, I generally ask myself questions all day long about trading, about what am I doing? Am I doing this right? Uh, whatever. So uh, questions are important and that's why we've been using a question uh, each week here for the last few weeks. We've been starting off uh, with questions at the end of our market now. So this week our question is, what subtle shifts could I make in my trading routine that might yield higher profits. What subtle shifts could I make? Now, the adjective subtle, right here is subtle. The adjective subtle means to make small changes. Subtle means small, very small. Now, many times the smallest changes we make in our lives yield the biggest results, and you've probably found that out. That's because small or subtle changes are easy to make and easy to continue and that's versus big changes that can be really uncomfortable and maybe difficult to achieve. So when we make one small change that leads us to better results, we may then decide to make another small change or subtle change that builds on the last one or supports it. And then the great results build exponentially. So if you consider or think about a small positive change you can make in your trading day, and if that thought makes us feel pleasant or encouraged, then we're likely to follow through with the action. However, if we think about making a huge change, and that, that's always been my downfall is I shoot too high, I've got to lower that, and I have been. So if you make, think about making a huge change and, and that thought generates feelings of anxiety or confusion or like, oh my gosh, I can't pull that off, then as humans, we, grav we gravitate away from pain and we probably will not follow through with that big action. So that's why small changes that are easy to execute are the most powerful and the most effective. So here are a couple subtle shifts you can make that may improve your trading day. Okay, here's one. Dedicate 15 minutes a day to review past trades. If you can't use that much time, do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But you will be amazed if you look at your past trades and say, okay, I entered here. I moved my stop here, here, here. 
I exited here. I either took profits or hopefully only a small loss. Review your past trades. They will teach you a lot. Finally, um, take a 15 minutes a day uh, or 10 minutes a day if you don't have 15. Please check your open positions and protective stops. And I do this before I check my emails because if I get tangled up in emails, uh, that can lead to a lot of, of, of ineffective, or I should say ineffective moves. So don't get tangled up in emails in the morning. Instead, take 10 minutes to check your open positions. Make sure your stops is, are where you want them. And uh, please know that if you do little subtle changes like this, little small, take small actions like this, they do build on yourself. And please know that subtle shifts can lead to bigger profits. Okay, you all, until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.